guys, 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 guys. It's finally out. Elk Timer 1.3 is finally ready for release. I have been talking about it for the past month online, everywhere I could possibly talk about it. And uh, today is the day that it's finally out. Like right now, right this moment, it is out. And it is absolutely amazing. Let me introduce myself first. Hi, I am Elk. I stream over on twitch.tv slash totally not an elk. And I also make a lot of stuff for streamers. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. It's this, this timer that I have built specifically for streamers. And a new version of it has just released that has some really cool integration options that allow you to trigger things on your stream when the timer like starts, stops, reaches a certain time, or, you know, a lot of other things. It's really, really cool. I personally use it to kind of sequence my entire starting soon. I have like a start starting soon timer that you launch and then after a few seconds it starts my starting soon DJ mix which is kind of like just like a nine and a half minute long intro song and then when the timer reaches a minute and 40 it starts playing a 90 second ad to try and get rid of as much pre-rolls as I can during my stream and I have this all set up through my elk timer with a bot. I personally use StreamerBot. You can use a bunch of other things to do this. My integration is just kind of like open-ended. It's using WebSockets, but don't get scared by that. It's really simple to use, really easy to integrate with your stuff, and we're gonna be covering it all today. So this is the new Elk Timer. I already have a video out there on the first version of Elk Timer and like how to use it, all of that sort of stuff, but your time is valuable, I know that, so I'm not gonna make you sit through an entire 10 minute video just to set up a freaking timer. Cause like at the end of the day, it's just a timer. Like, you know, it isn't, it's not worth your time. So I'm going to go ahead and just give you a quick rundown of what this app is, how to kind of use it. And uh, it'll be like 60 seconds or less. If you already know how to use it or you already watched the last video, please feel free to just skip right ahead. So like I said, Elk Timer is a timer for streamers. It essentially allows you to manage all of your stream timers in one simple user interface. Unlike some of the other timers that are out there for streamers, this one has more than one timer. You know, it has a lot of features, but also unlike some of the other more complex timers out there, it doesn't overload you with options. It only gives you a few options that you can change, such as the duration, the end text, the timer name, and with some optional sounds that can play when the timer ends, which by the way, you can add all your own sounds to. It's really cool, but it's really simple. And every Everything is all file based. So basically in your documents directory, you'll have a folder that gets created called elk apps slash timer. And in here, you're going to have TXT files for every single one of your timers. You will have a finished TXT and a timer TXT. And that basically means that whenever your timer is running, it's updating the timer file with the current timer in it. And the finished file just fills with the finished text whenever the timer is done running. And so to get that set up in OBS, all you really got to do is create two text sources. The first one, you're going to select read from file, and then you're going to choose the starting source soon timer.txt and then your other one is going to be your end text which is just selected your starting soon finished and, and that's literally it once you start your timer it sits here it runs it'll load in obs it's slightly delayed because of the way obs reads from a file it's not really the fault of elk timer it's just the way all timers are and then when it runs out of time it'll play your song or your sound you know or what, whatever you chose if you chose a, a sound it'll play a sound if you cho choose a song it'll play a song you know what i mean that's it I like this part, this part. It wasn't that part, it wasn't that part. So now back to the update, we're gonna be talking about the new stuff that is in here, namely this whole subscription cycle to timer events. So basically what we're going to be creating is like an LCD looking timer. It's really simple. It's basically just a PNG file loaded in as a you know media source. And then we have a text source, which just has like a LCD looking font with some text in it. I'll also have this font linked in the description if you really like this font and want to use it. I just thought it looked cool, especially since we're making something that looks like an alarm clock or like a scoreboard at a sports game. You, you know the type of displays I'm talking about. I really like to type in a fake time to begin with to just kind of like align it and make sure that everything looks good because when I select read from file, it goes to nothing. So then we're going to go into elk timer and we're going to create a new timer. I'm going to name this one LCD timer and then I'm going to give it a five minute duration. And then we have our timer and we can load that into OBS immediately. Basically, like I said, it's documents directory, elk apps, and then timer. And all of your timers will have their own files. We're selecting the LCD timer.txt. And then we click OK. We click OK again and we should be good. We should be able to just hit start now and your timer starts. We're all good. Everything is dandy in the world. We stay on a functioning timer. So now comes the fun part, when we get to add this to our bot. The goal for this update was to support both streamer bot and mix it up bot because they're both kind of have a lot of overlap and I know that a lot of people use mix it up bot. Uh, but after a very uh, 
interesting conversation with the uh, developers of Mix It Up Bot. It seems like they're not really interested in supporting WebSockets, which is really unfortunate. So right now you can't really leverage this in Mix It Up Bot. But I honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I seriously recommend StreamerBot. It's criminally underused. It has so many options. I'm, I'm actually working on an entire series right now of videos for migrating from Mix It Up Bot to StreamerBot because StreamerBot can basically do everything Mix It Up can do just with a lot more options out there. So stay tuned for that and get subscribed if you're interested in seeing that. So first things first, before we do anything else, you'll notice that I created this timer, this stream timer example in its own OBS scene. And that's what I'd recommend doing because we're going to use the nested scene for this, which essentially means you create a scene for specifically this timer. You add both things to it, the background, the text. If you want anything else in here, go for it. And then you can go to your main scene, which for my full screen is just this one. We can just right click, go to add, and then select scene. And then you can just select the stream timer example scene, click OK, and it's embedded. And now what's cool about this is, you know, we can hide it, we can show it, but we don't have to worry about importing both of those layers into every single scene. We can just use the stream timer example scene, which is really cool. And also you can like right click on it, go to show transition. I think this might actually be getting cut off, but you can go to slide and then we can like slide up. Okay, and then you right click on it again, go to hide transition and then slide and then slide down. And so then when we hide and show it, look at this. Look at that nice animation. So smooth. So there we go. We have a timer that is basically like hiding and showing. It doesn't, it's not doing anything by itself, just has a nice little animation and it has the ability to load the timer when we start it. Uh, so cool. How do we do something with it from this point? Well, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the timer automatically show. So this is going to happen. It's going to slide up as soon as the timer starts. And then as soon as the timer stops or finishes, it's going to swipe back down. We're going to do some other stuff on top of that, but we're going to start with that. So now we're going to go over to StreamerBot and we're just going to add in some actions. So make sure you're in your actions tab, right click and go to add. And then we're going to name this LCD timer show, uh, add a sub action and then go down to OBS, select the set source visibility state. We're going to select the stream timer example nested scene, change the state to visible and then click OK. And then we're going to duplicate this, rename this to LCD timer hide. And then we're going to double click on our sub action and just change this one to hidden. And so now we have two actions. One is going to show the timer. One is going to hide the timer. So now we can go to the server slash clients tab. Go back over to elk timer real quick. Click on the three dots on the very right side of LCD timer. Go to copy socket URL. And these are all the events right here that you can subscribe to. There's timer started, which is when you start the timer. Timer stopped when you stop it. Timer finished when it reaches zero. Timer ended when it either reaches zero or is stopped. Timer paused, timer resumed, and then time left. And this is when you can trigger something when a specific time is left. Like I said, you can do ads at, you know, a minute and 40, whatever you want. It's really cool. We're going to go to timer started and then just click OK. And then back in StreamerBot, we can right click in here, go to add, name this one LCD timer started. Uh, go ahead and paste your started in the endpoint. Check both of these checkboxes and then select in the message LCD timer show and then select and click OK. And now we got to repeat that for the LCD timer ended because we want it to hide when I either push the stop button or the timer reaches zero. So you go back into Elk Timer, click on copy socket URL, and we're going to do timer ended. And now we can go back into StreamerBot, add a new one, name this LCD timer ended, paste in the endpoint, check both of these, click on your message, select LCD timer hide, select and hit OK. And now you're never going to have to manually connect these, but the very first time that you add them, StreamerBot doesn't automatically connect. So you just got to right click on these and click connect. And then we're connected. So now we should be able to immediately go back over here, click on our start on LCD timer, and it should show. There it is. The timer should appear any moment. There it is. It'll count down. Whenever I hit the stop button, it should automatically hide. Perfect. Beautiful stuff. And like I said before, there's a slight delay when OBS reads text from files. So if you wanted to, you could go into OBS, select the LCD timer show, add a delay action and put like a two second, which would be 2000 millisecond delay on this set source visibility to visible. And so basically when we push it now, it'll wait two seconds. And then when it appears, the time should already be there. Yeah, there we go. So now the time is basically instantaneously there. So that's something you can do if you would like as well. And at this point, you can probably see how useful this type of stuff would be, especially when you can, you know, subscribe to the amount of time left and make something happen. You know, we could do something cool like make the uh, hurry up time for Mario play when your time runs low. In fact, I'm going to do that right here. Let's change our LCD timer. Let's just go ahead and change the duration to 10 seconds. That way it's easy to show this off real quick um, and then go into StreamerBot and let's create a new action. 
and let's do hurry up. Click OK, and then let's add a sub action for audio. We'll go to sounds and then play sound. And then I'm going to select and I have a Mario running out of time sound effect. Click open uh, and then click OK. And so we can go into Elk Timer, click on the three dots, go to copy socket URL, and let's go to time left. And let's say that when the time reaches five seconds, click OK. So then we go to our server clients, right click, click add, name this LCD timer, hurry, uh, paste in the endpoint, check both these checkboxes, click on the message, and then select hurry up. And then again, like we did before, we have to right click, go to connect, and then we can go ahead and test this out. When I hit start on the LCD timer, it'll start counting down, the time will swipe up, and then once we hit five seconds, the sound will play. Very cool. Very cool. So that's some really cool things that you can do. You could also like make the numbers uh, flicker whenever it's paused and then unflicker when it like resumes, kind of like how a sports clock will kind of just like fade in and out. There's a lot of really cool things you can use this for. And these are just some of the amazing possibilities. Like I said, you can sequence an entire event chain. Like I have my smart light set up to do a bunch of animations and stuff. Currently, it's just in this other app that I have made and I will release at some point. But like you could theoretically program animations for your lights in this app by having you know, a certain second to trigger a certain light in your smart home setup. There's just so many crazy things you can do with it. I think the most useful is like running ads for your starting soon. So the documentation for this update will be in the description down below that has a lot more in-depth information into all of this stuff. So yeah, I hope you like the update. Uh, I hope this is useful for you and I hope uh, Elk Timer makes your stream a little bit better. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you want to get subscribed down below to uh, stay in the loop for future uh, updates, you know, on this app or any other apps that I'm working on, that would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to leave a comment down below letting me know what cool uses you can think of for this new update. I think there's so many cool possibilities and I'm really looking forward to hearing what all of your crazy ideas are. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you next time.